Today we're going to start a new series we called Medical School Histology Basics. It will be basic information about various tissues, organs, and organ systems, and the host of cells in the histologic uh, analysis of the body. Today we're going to talk about epithelium and junctions, how you classify epithelia, how epithelial characteristics facilitates their function, and a little bit about uh, some questions associated with epithelium. Enjoy. Medical School Histology Basics, Epithelium and Junctions. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about epithelium and junctions. Epithelium functions in many ways. It's the outer protective surface of the body. It's the epidermis of your skin. It also forms glands, and it lines most cavities of the body. And here you can see in the kidney, this is the renal corpuscle. It's lined by simple squamous epithelium, and the inside is lined by podocytes, another type of epithelium. It also lines lines pass it away to the exterior. And here we see in the urinary bladder where fluid is going to be going out, urine is going to be going out. We have a transitional epithelium lining there. It also lines blood vessels. We see a blood vessel here, a lymphatic there, a little capillary here, endothelial cells, simple squamous epithelium align those cavities. Epithelial tissue participate in metabolism throughout the body. Absorption of things from the exterior, foodstuffs, or water, comes through epithelium. Eliminations of things to the outside goes through epithelium in our GI tract, in our urinary tract. Things have to go through. In fact, all substances, including gases, that are normally received or given off the body must pass through epithelium. Epithelia being plural, epithelium being single. For the performance of secretory functions, epithelia is a certain type, and we call those glands. And here we see some glands. This is the sweat glands here, sweat duct there, and here is intestinal villus with the cells lining the exterior goblet cells and absorptive cells. Now the origin of epithelium is from all three germ layers. The ectoderm gives rise to the skin, cornea, salivary glands, mammary glands. The endoderm on the inside gives rise to the GI tract, pancreas, liver, lungs, and also endocrine glands. Endocrine glands lose their connections to the surface and they become just secretions right into the connective tissue. Also, the mesoderm. The mesoderm in the middle is important, and the epithelium in those locations have a special name. Endothelium is what lines blood vessels. It is epithelium, but it's called endothelium. And mesothelium is what lines serous cavities, and we'll see some mesothelium later on. So where it comes from determines what type of structure is made from that. Epithelium is classified by different ways. One is a number of layers. If you have one layer, as you see here, we call it simple. If you have more than one layer, as you see here and here, we call it stratified. Also, we classify epithelium based on the cells on the surface. If they're flat, we call them squamous. If they're little boxes, we call them cuboidal. If they're columns, we call them columnar. So, you can have simple columnar, as you see here. You can have stratified columnar. Stratified squamous epithelium. The cells on the surface are flattened, just like the simple squamous is. There's other types of epithelium as well. Uh, one is pseudostratified. It looks like it's stratified but it's really not because all of them touch the bottom. And then we have transitional, one that can modify its shape with the filling of the bladder. It's in the urinary tract, and we will see that. So if we look to start with simple squamous epithelium, you can see them in blood vessels, simple flattened cells that are in these various blood vessels, stratified, more than one layer. Cuboidal is in the sweat gland duct. So this is a duct. You can see more than one layer here. So that's stratified cuboidal. And then stratified squamous squamous is what we see in the epidermis. The dermis here, the epidermis stratified squamous epithelium with flattened cells on the very surface. Also, epithelium lined the gut, and here you can see them lining the small intestine. These are intestinal villi. As you can see these projections here, intestinal villi, all of them are lined by cells, simple columnar epithelium, and even in the large intestine, you have the same type of lining, even though you don't have the villi on the surface. There's a host of different cells in there, and all those that are in the surface layer are epithelium. You can see these. There's these intestinal absorptive cells as well as goblet cells. This is a cross-section of intestinal villus, the same as this projection in through here. And you can see there's goblet cells, and here we can see goblet cells more clearly here on these projections. And then we have simple columnar cells, one layer of columnar cells. This is their base, and this is their apex. And so these are simple column cells, simple columnar epithelium.
do it. You can see those columns. There's one cell here. There's another cell here. You can see the cell membranes between the two. There's also mitochondria. And if we look at the bottom of the cell, we can see that actually epithelium sits on the basal lamina. There's a little fuzzy coat that's right in through there, the basal lamina. And then these are mitochondria like we're seeing here in the light microscopic view. These are goblet cells and these are intestinal absorptive cells. These guys here are white blood cells that migrate through epithelium. So this nucleus here is similar to that nucleus here and here. And so a little higher mag, we can see the basal lamina. is a fuzzy coat that all epithelium sits on the basal lamina. And it would be right in through there would be the basal lamina that we would have in these cells. So this is connective tissue. That epithelium sits on connective tissue. And here we can see the kidney. There's a cortex and there's a medulla. And this is uh, one of the renal corpuscles. And then these are the various ducts. And if we look at the kidney, we can see this is PAS staining, so it's staining for periodic acid shift, in other words, for sugars. And so it shows you where there's a rich concentration of sugars. And one of those is the basement membrane. And you can see the basement membrane is PAS positive, as indicated by this dark line around there. So uh, of the cells that we see there, whether they're simple squamous epithelium that we see here, and that aligning this uh, corpuscle, it too has a basement membrane around it, or whether you have simple cuboidal cells that we see here aligning the nephrons along the way. Simple cuboidal epithelium, sometimes a simple columnar uh, epithelium. Uh, and here we can see the intestinal absorptive cells, the columns that we see, and we can see that actually there's not much space between adjacent ones, and that's characteristic of epithelium is that there may be tight junctions between adjacent cells, um, elaborate junctions between the cells, and as a consequence, there's not much extracellular space. So these are intestinal absorptive cells. You can see the brush border right in through there, the nuclei of these cells, and then these guys here are the goblet cells that secrete mucin material. And in fact, if you stain the intestinal tissue with a PAS, you will see that not only do you have the basement membrane staining, but you also have the brush border is staining, as you see there, of the cells, and also the goblet secretions of the goblet cells are staining as well. So you can see a typical goblet cell, there's this mucin that's located here in the cytoplasm of the cell. It's kind of like a wine glass. It's a shape of the goblet cells with the brush border in through there. What that is, a, a lot of microvilli projecting off the surface of the cells, and they have a rich amount of glycocalyx or sugars. So the sugars on both sides, the, ap the apical region, the outside near the lumen, and also the basal region where the basal basement membrane is located. And so if we see that with these cells, this is a little arteriole. These are endothelial cells, blood vessel, and these are smooth muscle cells. But here we can see the basal lamina, very nice basal lamina going in through there around these cells. Usually the basal lamina is very thin, but sometimes it can be thick. And here we can see this is the endothelial cell here that is got a thick basement membrane and then also basal lamina. The basal lamina is quite big in the case of this Sertoli cell, which is a nurse cell in here. This is an aged rat testis, which uh, in those cases you can see a thickening of the basal lamina. Now, epithelium is specialized. They're polarized and the junctions is what makes them polarized. They have apex and a base. There's a basal lamina at the very base. And you can see there's a series of junctions. There's a zonula occlude. The zone means a belt. It goes all the way around. It's a tight junction. It prevents things from going through. There's also a zonia adherence, which is an adhering belt. And that's the one that interacts with a high density microfilaments to support the fusion of the membranes that you see there with the zonia occludens. And then we have spot wells. You see spot wells that we see there, which are desmosomes. And then the other type of junction is gap junctions. And really this guy's name because the, the, the gap between adjacent cells is uniform because all the proteins that are hold the membrane together. The gap junction is associated with communication. So we can see there, this is one of those cells, maybe a cuboidal cell. You can see the desmosomal connections, and you can see the zonia occludens, which prevent things from coming through, the zonia adherence, and the macular adherence. And these three collectively together make the terminal bars that you can see at the light microscopic level. And so this is the same as that, that we 
can see at the tops of these cells. Like this is one cell and this is another cell in through there and there's the brush border which is uniform microvilli that has a sugar coating that makes it PAS positive. So here we can see these are intestinal absorptive cells, these are goblet cells and we can see a brush border in through there but also you can see the terminal bars. The terminal bars are very nice and plain in through there. You can see terminal bars through there and there. If you cut perpendicular to the surface of a cell you will have looking through the terminal bar material which is really a belt that goes all the way around it. Here you can see the material that goes around. You can see it over here too. See it completely surrounds. So this zonia occluding zonia adherence and macular adherence they go all the way around and seen as terminal bars or if you have a, a cross section right through this region through there you'll see that it is indeed a belt and that's where it means zonulite means a belt and here we can see at the ultrastructural level where uh, there's junctions between adjacent cells and those are the junctions that we're talking about the zonia adherence uh, Zonia occlutans here, zonia adherence. Lots of organelles are inside the cell, but right in through there is very clear. It has a lot of filaments in through there, and that's known as a terminal web. Here we see the goblet cells, and the goblet cell has these secretions, which we've seen is PAS positive, that is pink staining. The gap junction we can see in these liver cells, a uniform gap, very dark in through there because all the proteins between the two. And here we can see a biocanaliculus, and in order to keep this separate from the blood, you have have a tight junction which is zonia occlutans, zonia adherence, macular adherence, uh, that you have the same type of thing that we saw at the apex of the cells. And so if you look at the gap junction that we saw here as the gap junction there and here, and if you look there you see a series of protein, proteins that project from one cell to another cell and it's those proteins that have a hole in them that makes a channel for things to communicate between the different cells. Now if we look at simple squamous epithelium and view it on the side we see it like that. That's your typical thing. But if, if you view it face on you see that these flattened cells are really oval in the other dimension and the cell is flat and that's what we see and we see in the cytoplasm of the cell it is squamous cell and you can see it in this the capillaries you can see it in the venules you can see it in the valve all these are simple squamous epithelium that we see here that line of blood vessels and also lymphatics. You can see them right here. These are the endothelial cells, a simple squamous epithelium, which is, this happened to be the endothelium because remember, it comes from the mesoderm. Also, a simple squamous epithelium are other blood vessels. You can see right here, this arteriole has these cells in through there. Lymphatic here, again, has simple squamous uh, epithelium, the valves and the spermatic cord. We can see the endothelial cells on the surface of this lymphatic and their little vein. All these blood vessels and all have endothelial cells, simple squamous epithelium, which is known as endothelium. And here we can see another one of those endothelial cells here at, like, at the electron microscopic level. You actually see two of these. This is one cell here and then there's another cell there and you can see the junctions where one cell is making junctions and those junctions are the same. Zonia occluding, zonia adherence, macular adherence. But these are simple squamous, simple, flat cells that you can see. This one actually has a little parasite as well. And here we see a little parasite just outside the endothelial cell, but in, actually in the basal lamina of the endothelial cell. Other types of, uh, of epithelia is stratified squamous epithelium. Sometimes it can have hair follicles, as you see here. Other times it can knock and be very cretinized in the case of like a sole of your foot or someplace. Here's stratified squamous epithelium and cretinides. You can see this need not be that dark, but there are cells that are dead cells who no longer have the organelles inside there, no longer has a nucleus there. And it's stratified as multiple layers in through there. The cells differentiate, they divide in the very base. And these, of course, have a basal lamina and basement membrane down through there. Then they differentiate, differentiate as they go to the surface. So this is uh, epidermis that we're talking about. There's uh, air in through there. There's a cretinized uh, stratum corneum in through there. And then we can see the desmosomal connections, which makes it like a little spines. So these are the desmosomes holding tight between adjacent cells. And stratified cuboidal epithelium, we only find that in sweat duct glands. In the glands, you have the ducts that take the sweat to the surface, and it's those sweat ducts that have stratified more than one layer cuboidal. Also, we have the tongue. 
the tongue and appears a vagina too. Both of those have a stratified squamous epithelium, but it's non cratinized It does not have a stratum corneum on the surface. You can have it in the case of a tongue in certain places you know, where you have projections, and especially like a cat or something that, that has a real rough tongue. So we have stratified squamous epithelium, non cratinized and we note that by the fact that you have nuclei that goes all the way to the surface. So this is a tongue, and this is the vagina. A different type of epithelium is in the airway. So this is part of the trachea. There's the cartilage that we see. And this is a certain type of epithelium, pseudostratified columnar epithelium, which is ciliated and have goblet cells as well. And we can see that here. These, we can see the goblet cells. You can see the cilia on the surface. But all the cells touch the base. Another characteristic about the trachea epithelium, the respiratory epithelium, it has a very big basement membrane. Actually, it's the basal lamina that you can see there. And so simple squamous epithelium line the airways. Remember, I told you that all substances, including gas, has to go through epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium lines the airways, but the conducting portion of the respiratory system have this respiratory epithelium, which is pseudostratified by columnar epithelium, which has ciliated cells and goblet cells. And that's what we see here. And below the surfaces, you have these plasma cells to produce antibodies to project out in through here. You see the cilia on these cells. You can see the basal bodies of these cilia. All these cells touch the base. They don't all touch the top. And if you look at a certain place in the conducting portion of the respiratory system, this is where you have the true, vo true vocal cords. And the true vocal cords doesn't have respiratory epithelium. It has stratified squamous epithelium because that's the type of epithelium that's on your skin. That's the type that's in your uh, esophagus to withstand and abrasion. And so in order to withstand the mechanical stress of vibration of the vocal cord, you have to have stratified squamous epithelium. Other places you have pseudostratified columnar epithelium called respiratory epithelium. That is until you get to the lungs and then you're going to have a simple squamous epithelium. And here we see in the urinary bladder, we have transitional epithelium. And transitional epithelium, remember, it has this kind of flocculent stuff, kind of bulging. You can see the bulgingness of the cells on the surface here in the vagina and there's the ureter. Both have urinary system that has transitional epithelium. If we look at one of these images, this is an image of the wall of the urinary bladder. This is the lumen of the bladder and we have transitional epithelium with these little arches at the surface and through here in multiple layers of cells. Also on the other side in the outside of the cavity and through there we have mesothelium. So let's just take a look at tissue here and we'll be able to look and see this image that come in and we'll be able to see the different layers and so if we look at the transitional epithelium on the surface you see this is multiple layers and this kind of arc like shape on the surface is characteristic of transitional epithelium also if you look at blood vessels you see a simple squamous epithelium which is really the endothelium remember it comes from the mesoderm and here we can see it again, these flattened cells on the surface are endothelial cells. And if we move to the outside, we can see another group of cells in through there. These are the mesothelial cells, the mesothelial cells that line the outside cavity. Mesothelium provides a slick surface so that the bladder, when it fills and empties, it can move in relation to other structures in there because it is kind of oily or lubricant, slick, slick and be able to uh, to slide around. So in these, we see three different types. We see the transitional epithelium. We see the mesothelium, which can be kind of squamous, or sometimes we can see them all along through there. They could usually cuboidal, but it can be squamous, as we see there. And of course, simple squamous epithelium that we see here in blood vessels. In the tongue, we have stratified squamous epithelium, but also you have glands. And some of those glands are mucus. A mucus gland, like there's one cell of the mucus gland. It's got this. Uh, light mucus that you see in a flattened nucleus as opposed to a serous gland is more red and the nucleus is more spherical and not flattened at the base because it's a serous or pronaceous as opposed to a more mucus type secretion and over here we can see the serous and the mucus 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 all in through there this is serous funds so in summary, epithelia has different functions. It uh, forms the outer protective surface of the epidermis of the skin, forms glands, it lines cavities, it also lines blood vessels as well. All substances, including gases, normally received or given off by the body must go through epithelia. Questions on epithelia. 
What items? This was a characteristic of epithelia. Secretory cells of glands? Yes. The cells cover organs? Yes. Line the urinary tract? Lines all openings to the outside of the body, A, B, and C. Which junction description pair matches? Zonia occlutens? Tight junctions around the cell? Yes, it makes a belt, hence the word zonual. Occlusion, it's a tight junction, prevent things from going through. Zonia adherence, adhering junction around the cell? Yes, it's a belt of a hearing junction. Uh, hemodesmosome, a spot attachment of cells to the connective tissue below? True, it's at the bottom of the cells. And it's hemo because it's a hapodesmosome, and it attaches to connective tissue below. So the answer is A, B, and C, or E. Which embryologic origin distribution of epithelium do not match? Do not match. Endoderm, endothelium. No, endothelium comes from the mesoderm. Uh, endoderm, uh, GI tract? Yes. Mesoderm, mesothelium? Yes. Mesothelium and endothelium come from the mesoderm. Ectoderm, mammary gland? Yes. Ectoderm, epidermis? Yes. So hopefully these questions will help out. We want to thank the many books that show materials were taken to illustrate things. These were the original source, and we want to thank the original source of these various things and body worlds for, for their sample. And here we see a ranch just south of Fort Stockton, Texas, and this is on the road to Big Bend, Texas. This concludes a medical school histology basics epithelia and junctions thank you for listening and if this was useful to you please share with your colleagues and your friends and please consider subscribing to vibs histology youtube thank you